I am Michelle Miller, your host of the Royal Queen's Rising podcast. We share our inspiring stories and secrets to our success. Welcome to the Royal Queen's Rising podcast. Today I have a very special guest, Bianca, DJ BB Bad. She's a badass, I'll have to say. She's a baddie. She does all kinds of incredible things from choreography, dancing, DJing, and has worked with some of my favorite artists like Sean Paul. So I can't wait to learn more about how did this all start and you know what you're up to now. So let's just rewind. You started with music when you were really young. Young, right <clears throat> and then that led to dance yeah so actually when I was I don't really know the age but I was pretty young um and I started playing the violin first um and then eventually I transitioned transition into um classical piano and I've been doing that ever since so it's been like maybe like seven years although don't hold me to it now because I haven't practiced in forever <laughs> but um yes music was my first love um, and I have two older sisters, so I kind of followed in their footsteps where like the dancing was concerned. Um, but that was just really like a hobby. My mom used to put us in all these extra curricular activities after school to keep us busy. And so by the time I was like five, six, I was already in ballet class. And now I'm 24, so it's been almost 20 years since I've been dancing. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. I love um, watching your videos. It's really inspiring. I'm like, I am the least coordinated dancer, but <laughs> I do have a lot of fun and I, you know, get out of my head and just do it. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's really cool that, you know, you kind of grew up with it all and that your mom put you in it and look at you now, you're dancing with Chris Brown and <laughs> Sean Paul. So oh, cool. Yeah. So um, <laughs> how did you turn it into like more of a career? So by the time I was like 15, I was considering pursuing it professionally. So I've been training most of my life in St. Martin up until I was um, 17, which is when I left to go to New York to pursue dance professionally. Um, and luckily, it was a decision that my family was very supportive of, um, which I don't know if you know, like, you know, in the Caribbean, people are so kind of like against pursuing the arts is like, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer, but like, don't even think about the arts because it's not a real job you know but my family was very supportive so by the time I was 15 I was already traveling back and forth to New York doing like dance workshops and then by the time I was 17 I decided okay I want to move to New York and really see what I could do um and then yeah from there like things just really happened so quickly like I got signed right away I was doing a dance training program and I really um was able to like just get my face out there and after maybe like a year and a half of being signed, um, things just started happening. I booked my first tour and I went all the way to Japan. So, you know, New York is just one of those places once you like in it, once you just like involve in the community and you like just doing what you do and you, you know, consistent on social media and all these things, which kind of came after social media came after um, a little while after. Um, but yeah, like eventually things just started happening. And ever since then, well, before the pandemic, <laughs> I was pursuing dance full time. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. So what were you doing in Japan? What was that tour about? So I was on a four month tour in Japan with um, uh, this Japanese boy band called uh, J Soul Brothers. And basically it's seven artists, which they all dance and sing and rap. Um, <laughs> it's just on the other side of the world. So we actually have no idea who they are, but they are like huge in Japan. So like literally like we would be performing in different stadiums around Japan, different um, cities in Japan and like 50,000 people a night, just show after show after show. Um, so yeah, I was there for four months and me and six other girls from LA and New York were like the lead girls to match with the guys. Uh -huh. So that was like one of my, that was like the first big job I had that really like uh, got me into the dance industry. Mm -hmm. That sounds incredible. And you're pretty young doing that. Like, you're so brave. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so now, so like question. So with the pandemic, like what have you been doing? <laughs> oh, that's the funny story because that's actually when I became a DJ. So oh, yes. March, 2020, I came home because I usually choreograph for this show called Heineken Regatta. It happens every year, the first weekend of March. And so Heineken flies me down, I choreograph, I get girls together um, and we put together this whole show. 
Um, and so I was home for that, like two weeks. And then my mom is like, okay, like there's this COVID thing going on. I don't think you should go back to New York. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> I need to continue with my life. I'm not staying here for no pandemic. But then LA shut down, New York was on fire. I was like, okay, wait, this is like a serious thing. So then eventually I got stuck on my island <laughs> and I was like, it's been two years. Um, and I said stuck in the beginning because I was like, you know, I had so many goals so many things I wanted to do I wanted to move to LA like I want to like you know like just take my dance career to the next level I'm like how am I supposed to do this when the whole entire world is on lockdown you know so that was really demotivating for a long time and then um by summer 2020 I actually we had like zero cases on the island for like one week and I was like you know what like me and all my friends were home from all different places of the world and we was like you know let's just throw a party together and then we contacted this DJ and then after that we became really close and he was like yo like would you want to learn how to DJ and I'm like well <laughs> I have so much time on my hands like why not yeah. you know because I always used to trip on him and tell him like you know you and all these DJs on the island you guys always playing the same thing every time I'm out I'm hearing similar music the same thing same thing from every DJ and he's like okay well if you think it's so easy like let me teach you and let me show you like why we do what we do so obviously now like I have a whole other level of respect for DJs because now I understand the task at hand <laughs> um, but that is basically like how I got into DJ and it was not like this thing on my mind that was like oh like let me think about pursuing something new in the middle of a pandemic it was kind of just like I have so much time on my hands I love music like let me just try and see what happens you know and then like instantly it just became a new passion for me oh my gosh I love that yeah there's a couple women that I've interviewed who became DJs during COVID <laughs> not a bad hobby to pick up or a career <laughs> it's the best yeah the whole thing with playing the same music because I, I have a different theory, I think, on DJing. For me, it's an art form. So, like, I'm not scared to jump all over the place. I tease, like, DJ genre jumper. I love it all. So, like, I get overwhelmed because I love it all. But, like, now I'm learning a lot more about how the programming is super important and, you know, lining your, your music up and um, not only by BPM but by key and, like... So like really knowing your music is like, okay, so that's where, I, where I've been focusing lately and I've been in DJing for 13 years and now I feel like I'm back to the beginning. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, I slowed down, like I've built a brand, I've built a company. Um, now let's go back to basics of like organizing music and like setting those cue points. It's a big, a big task, uh, you know, cause you can easily accumulate thousands, hundreds, thousand songs. <laughs> So as a, so, I don't know how you are with organizing, but um, I think you know if I would have learned these things in the beginning, how important it was to you know organize and keep keep your library like small and manageable and really save the music that you really truly know and love and will play often. <laughs> like they say, like after a year, look at your play counts, and if you haven't played that song, get it off your computer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well luckily for me like because I had a mentor like I had somebody who's been in the game for almost like 10 years and like he's a club DJ so I had a lot of guidance you know like I had the person who already went through all the mistakes to be like okay this is what you're doing this is what you're not going to do you mm -hmm. know so like everything was kind of handed to me the only job I really had to do was like prove that I could like handle the club scene prove that I know what to play to get people lit like what works at what time you know and um a lot of the DJs have been like really supportive um in terms of like giving advice or sharing whatever they can to just help me get better and better and the number one thing has been obviously like yes behind the scenes learning about your equipment and music and stuff like that that's very important but like as like club DJs you know they would always say like the number one thing you need to learn how to do is read your crowd because if you don't know how to read your crowd it doesn't matter if you could blend so smoothly because that's something I really take pride in it's like my clean mixing but they're like it do that doesn't really matter if you don't know what to play at the right time yeah. you know so just like having like all these DJs around me has like been such a like a learning experience you know too because mm -hmm. most of them been in, in it for like five years and up some of them 20 you know so the advice is just 
all right there to like not make those same mistakes you know yeah that's that's beautiful I mean it's so important to have a mentor and have a support system and reading your crowd it's definitely something you learn through experience and um we had a big talk about this recently a bunch of us DJs and they were talking about like even reading like early like pay attention to who comes in and who comes in early and who's who's drinking at the bar and like all the fine details of analyzing your your crowd and the people like what are they wearing and like all this stuff and I was like well you guys are getting deep into it but it's it's true it's like okay who's going to be your dancers and what are they responding to yeah 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 all of that yeah and I think probably even more so like for me as a dancer you know like already knowing what I would want to hear when I'm out and then like you know just basing what I think would go well like on that too you know like music choice wise also you know yeah because sometimes I feel like people could just kind of like jump around between genres but it's like oh like what would blend perfectly with this from this to this you know yeah um yeah I think dancers and choreographers and like fitness trainers they're they're DJs if they they might not realize that but you're putting your music together for your performances <laughs> the way that we listen to music is very maybe sometimes even more in detail than a dj because the most important thing for a dj to know is like cues when to blend in and out if you understand a song it's super simple but like the way that we listen to like the dynamic of music like the the count the end counts in between the count or like the the range like when the when like from the voice, you know, like, like we like switch between beats and voices and all these different things in the music that is like so more, so much more intricate than maybe a DJ would, you don't have to pay attention to those things as a, as a DJ, you know, but I mean, it depends again, how like intricate you want to be, you know, like when they do the wordplay thing. So like maybe there's DJs like that too, then they pay even more attention, you know? Yeah. So yeah, very interesting. Like, it was, it was an easy transition for me as a dancer, I would say, because I already understood music. I already understood counts. I already had, like, the music is already, like, in me, you know? So it wasn't a matter of, like, okay, how do I count this? How do I yeah. start this? You know, it was it was just a flow, you know? Yeah, that's so awesome. So what um, has been some of your funnest parties you've gotten to do? Um, I would definitely have to say um, summertime in Lotus. Lotus is one of the biggest nightclubs on the island um, and I got to headline throughout the summer um, for like a ladies night and that was that really like brought me to the next level because I was headlining by myself or like with another female DJ and I had to learn how to be on the mic because I'm like okay I'm on at prime time and yes you could play all the hits but like if you don't if, if you're not on the mic you're kind of missing a little extra something that would take your performance to the next level you know um so like me learning to be on the mic and being like mad nervous not knowing what to say because majority of the guys um, majority of the DJs are guys so I'm like do I want to really say what they say hell no <laughs> <laughs> the guys could be a little raunchy sometimes and I'm like I rather like empower women and like figure out how to like be inclusive of everybody you yeah. know so just like being on that journey but then like also just there was so many nights where the club would be packed and I would just like make certain decisions not knowing how it would go if I play this genre or that genre and then it would just turn out to be like the best thing ever people would be like screaming the music jumping up and down and Ooh. that really showed me like okay like you are like on your way like you're really starting to understand now you're really starting to take chances because sometimes I feel like that's something that maybe male DJs lack like they don't want to take that chance and maybe I could just speak for my island I don't know about other places but like they don't really want to take the chance to like make a mistake and play a genre that maybe somebody might be like oh this is this was not the vibe for like after the hip-hop you should have played soca or whatever but it's like I feel like I'm just like oh like what's the worst thing that could happen if I just take this chance and then it's either like okay they're not vibing with it or great they're vibing with it and if they don't vibe with it then okay let's switch it up let's see what else they want you know yeah. so it's just been like a cool experimental journey you know <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's the best that's how I started too we had this like party down the street at once a week and and it was kind of like a house party vibe but it was like in this commercial building <laughs> and, and I would just play whatever <laughs> like that's how I learned you know experimenting it's all experimental and it's fun <laughs> that's what's important it'll be fun exactly yeah amazing yeah. so let's talk about I want to know how you um do you have an agent like how did you get these gigs uh dancing in the music videos with Sean Paul and Chris Brown 
So that's actually an interesting story. Um, at the time in New York, I did have an agent, but they were not involved in how I ended up meeting Sean Paul. So actually, um, Tanisha Scott, you know, he, uh, she's his um, choreographer, creative director. Um, she just randomly hit me up on Instagram one day and she was like, hey, um, I'm shooting a music video for Sean Paul's artist, Ching Ching, in New York. Um, are you available? Can you like send me some dancers that do dance hall? We're looking for like, you know, girls with like your body type, your height type of situation and actually I was in LA but I was like Tanisha Scott Sean Paul I was like hell yeah <laughs> let me fly back to New York so I flew back to New York I was sending her like all these dancers that I work with that do dance hall afro beats type vibes um and then I ended up on set um met Cha Ching Ching super dope vibes Sean Paul was there and then we ended up talking and, and he was like, oh, like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from St. Martin. And he was like, oh, like, I haven't been there so long. But it was like just this like genuine, natural connection. And like he was on set the whole day watching us dance and do our thing. And then he went to T Tanisha at the end and he was like, I really want, back then I used to have red hair. <laughs> he was like, I really want this girl with the red hair to be in my next music video. So Tanisha called me over at the end of the music video shoot. And she was like, Sean Paul wants you in LA at the end of the month for his next music video like are you available and I'm like actually <laughs> I was already in LA I'm going right back to LA after this like of course I would love to be in a shop on music video like obviously like he is the freaking OG <laughs> I'm like I would never miss that opportunity yeah. so then I ended up flying out to LA and um, my agents they were still involved in the process like you know financials you know dealing with the contracts and stuff like that but that was really just true like meeting him and having a genuine connection and having him be like oh like she's dope like let's get her over there for my next music video yay that's so and it's funny like ever since then we've been like connected because then I became a DJ and um I think I, I messaged him on Instagram and I was like can you send me like a drop <laughs> I didn't even think he would answer but he was like oh yes yeah, sir and then like a few minutes later he sent me like yo Sean Paul big up my girl DJ BB Bad I was just like oh my god like uh -huh. wow so it's like from dancing now to like DJing and just having his support. I'm like, that's that's like super dope and like genuine of an artist, like of his caliber, you know? Yeah, no, that's been my experience with him when I first met him. Um, I don't even know how long ago it was. It was pre-kids. So it was like 16, 17 years ago. He first Ooh, came wow. to where I live. Have you ever heard of Reggae on the River, the festival? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I live in Humboldt County, Northern California. Mm -hmm. We're most famous for cannabis and reggae on the river. And so all the Jamaican artists would come here and play my whole life. And we have this festival that had been going on for 35 years. Like last time we had it, Busy Signal came out, Movado. Like we get we get like some real Jamaican like acts. And um, that's where I first met Sean Paul. And um, but anyways, yeah, super humble. Like we've been to shows together in uh, LA, San Francisco. My daughter's dad was friends with him and um, always, always a nice guy. I get to see them play in May. So I'm super excited about that. Reached out to Fahrenheit. I'm like, hey, we're going to be there. His his hype man. <laughs> like, let's link link up. <laughs> it's going to be, I'm excited for that. So yeah, that's amazing. That I mean, it really is true that like one gig always leads to another gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like her finding you on Instagram says you're doing your job uh, marketing yourself. And yeah, I was like, you know, like you never know who is who is watching you, like who sees your stuff. And it's only just a matter of time before somebody might actually need you for something. And they're like, hey, like I've been because that's what she said. She was like, I've been following your work for a long time. I really love what you do. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> me. <laughs> of course, like I'm doing what I love and I'm doing it, you know, like, yeah. but like you just never know after that point I was like okay I definitely know people are watching mm -hmm. and I just have to keep doing what I'm doing and if you love me if you want to reach out to me like we're gonna make something work you know yeah what song are you um in his video on which one was that um it's called he puts out so much music and I don't always watch the music it's, it's the one with Janae Aiko um, oh yeah okay all right how could I not even remember oh Nick Naked Truth. It's called Naked Truth. Naked Truth. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch that. <laughs> cool. What about what about your video with Chris Brown? How'd that one happen? That was also another very interesting story. Um, it was not through my agent again. It was really true. Like 
So in New York, um, there's a very small community of Caribbean people and African people. Actually, I shouldn't say small, but like among the dancers, it could be pretty small. So those were predominantly the people that I would be hanging around with as a Caribbean person um, around the dance hall scene, around the Afrobeat scene. And Davido, he was following one of my friends who does Afrobeats um, dance for a really long time. And then he reached out to him one day and he was like, hey, like, I have a really big music video coming soon with a, with a, a big artist. Like, I'm going to need you to get some dancers together and be a part of this music video. So he's like, cool, you know, just hit me up when every when all the details are done. And then next thing you know, oh, shoot, the video is collabing with Chris Brown. They, they want to fly us out to LA to shoot this music video. They want like, the video is like, you know, I want to bring the culture. I want to bring like the movement. So next thing you know, we all on a plane <laughs> going to LA, like everything paid for. They put us up in a hotel. We got to meet Chris Brown. We had to like drive like for like, well, it felt like three hours. I don't remember how long it was, but we drove like in LA, like to the middle of nowhere, like a desert. <laughs> <laughs> this music video. And um, oh, yeah, wow. it was just one of those situations of like having um, good friends, good connections that all just like came together and made that happen. And it was actually one of the fastest music video shoots I've ever been on. Um, probably partially because, so like last minute, um, the choreographer who um, had hit me up for the music video, he kind of switched the styling and everything because they had a very, um, they had a very different vision for what they wanted for us. But we were like, we trying to like bring the culture and the movement. We can't necessarily do it with the vision that they originally had. So he flipped the whole script. And then basically when we got there, um, we was like dancing on gravel. So that was really painful. So we only got to shoot like maybe like three, four times. And then they were like, okay, like we're not trying to mash up your feet. <laughs> like, let's just like get as much as we can in, a, in the shortest amount of time and then just call it a day, you know? So uh, I think we were also supposed to be on set a lot longer than we were, but things just, because the plan kind of switched last minute, um, things kind of went in a different direction, but also just like Nathan DeVito, again, another super like genuine artist that's just like, yeah, come over, like, let's all hang out. And we're just like, whoa, like, <laughs> it's DeVito, you know, and even Chris Brown, like how he was just so cool, you know, like shaking everybody's hands and just like, you know, like, thank you for being here and like expressing how like nervous he was to like be dancing with us, which with like, the Afrobeat stuff, he's like, that's not something that I do. So he's like, whoa, like, what do I even do with, with you guys in the background, you know? So it's just like really like humbling moments every time to like meet all these artists who you think are like so, um, such like uh, superheroes. And then you realize, oh, wow, like they're just regular humans that like experience the same emotions as us. And here we are all together about to like make some magic happen, you know? Right, that's the best. That's the best because you you listen to their music and you're, you're a fan and you just like grow up with them. <laughs> and then you get to meet them and they're just like, a normal nice human yeah 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 I'm like wow <laughs> one yeah. memory I had was I was pregnant with my daughter and we linked up with Sean Paul because the only way I was going to get into the festival was if we had like all access and we can drive in because it's on a river bar and it was like my baby was due like a, a week later and I'm about to pop and we got to the <laughs> hotel and his dancers were roller skating around the parking lot they were like just warming up their bodies and he always has like the most amazing dancers <laughs> so that's so fun I love it that's just incredible is there any do you have any music videos coming up or anything crazy coming up well actually so right now for the past has it been three years already for the past three years I've been connected with Afrobeat um I'm one of his dancers and so he's planning a whole tour he has a bunch of spot dates going on 2022 so I might not be able to disclose yet because we're still working on some final details, but he is going to be like traveling and releasing new music. So potentially that is going to be what my 2022, well, a part of my 2022 um, traveling with Afrobeat and performing for live shows and stuff like that. Nice. Curious if you had the opportunity to actually like DJ and dance, would you do that? Like at, say you like, cause that would be a lot, but like, would you? <laughs> Um, actually, yeah. So interestingly enough, um, that is kind of what, so I'm, I'm planning a show around the idea of like DJing and dancing. So 
in the beginning, it kind of started as something fun. Like with my dance friends, they would come out and support me. And then I would play a song that we all have choreography to. And then we would, I would come out with them and just like, you know, do the, do the choreography real quick and then run back to the DJ booth. So <laughs> after doing that enough times, I was like, oh, this is something different. Like maybe we could put together a whole show around this idea. So coming soon. Cool. <laughs> you will be seeing a dad's dj show yay that's that's so fun um i <laughs> i have a friend who she sings and uh sometimes i dj for her and she's like i, I want to put together a dance routine and i'm like that's just too much i'm like well, just running well, tracks well. makes me nervous <laughs> running tracks for an artist you know but yeah. um, but maybe one day <laughs> i'm still learning zumba <laughs> Yeah, one day you could bring those steps over on stage. You never know. Just play the right song. You yeah. bust a little two steps and go back. <laughs> yeah. I try to dance when I DJ. There's a big Afro beat show happening in um, festival in Puerto Rico coming yes. up. Are you going? Most likely with Afro B, yes. Woo! <laughs> I know it's tempting. I see it pop up on social media. I'm like, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all over the place. Yeah. We had we had a big one in uh, Sacramento this summer. I was actually there with Afro B. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Did you get to see Shensia? Um, no, actually, that was like way earlier in the day. You know, like when you're traveling with artists, they just kind of show up for their set, and then they're like, okay, we're done. Let's go home. <laughs> cool that's yeah. awesome you were there I really wanted to be there but I had like a wedding or I was going flying to Hawaii to DJ a wedding like the Ooh. next week so I just didn't want to take any risks <laughs> cool that's amazing so what advice do you have to anybody watching that is maybe even dreaming to DJ and hasn't done it yet hmm advice <sighs> What would I say? Um, honestly, for me, um, I feel like if you want anything bad enough, it's possible to make it happen. You know, um, especially if you love music, if you feel like you have a good like feel for it and it's something that um, you could be really good at, then obviously like, you know, find ways to make it work, whether that's like reaching out to, to like, maybe not your favorite DJ, but reaching out to like a DJ who you feel like would be accessible would take that time to like mentor you and work with you or if that doesn't work out you know like going on youtube and like everything is on youtube now so you have no excuse to not learn like anything that you want to learn because everything is literally right there um and yeah it's like like with everything that you that you are trying in life like it's going to take time it's going to take mistakes it's going to take dedication it's going to take hard work but again if you love it enough it is super possible and yeah. yeah just be you be different explore yourself and let that flow through your music and your artistry yes yes love it <laughs> well thank you so much for being on the show it was so fun to connect with you and thanks for sharing all your stories of all the amazing experiences you got me all excited <laughs> Um, I can't wait to see what you do. You're so young and you have such a bright future. I feel it. I see it. You've done so much already. Like incredible. I can't wait to meet you one day. I know it's going to happen. I have no idea what city, what <laughs> country, but <laughs> now, now that we've made the link, maybe you can come to California. Well, you're going to come to California. Maybe you can come to Northern California. <laughs> oh, we're going to link up. <laughs> yes. So what's the best way for us to stay connected to you and support you? So if you follow me on Instagram at BB underscore bad, um, there's a link in my bio where you can find my YouTube, my website, my TikTok, my PayPal, my everything. <laughs> so that is where you can find everything in order to follow me and stay up to date with everything that I'm doing. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you everyone for tuning Bye. in. Go to my website to claim your free gift, a digital copy of my best-selling book, How to Start a DJ Business, www.djrundat.com. Follow me on all social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at DJ Rundat. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. To learn how you can book me or work with me, go to my website or email me at michelle at djrundat.com.